I'm in the 2012 Regal GS. I think I've been waiting for this a long time. GM is bringing hot rods back to their sedans. I mean, you think Buick, you think old person, you think rental car, I'm sorry, but that's just become the brand. But China thinks Lexus. The demand for Buick is being driven by China. Well, no surprise there, pretty much the demand for anything is being driven by China. Now, is it competing with the BMWs of the world? Ah, rear wheel drive versus front wheel drive, that's a fight you're really not gonna win. But, is this one like this, loaded to the gills, $37,000? $37,000 in Beamer world doesn't really get you very much. It's not a small car either. But this car moves. The engine is very willing. It never sounds labored. You get it way up near the red line, and it's still not really complaining about it. It's perfectly happy to run there. The engine is great. The transmission is not. Every time I shift, it sits here and goes, OK, I, I think we're, is that what we want? OK, now we're going. Check your expectations. This is a shiftable automatic. This is not a paddle shift. This is not a dual clutch. Using this transmission made it to this engine is like having a prize-winning racehorse ridden by a brand new jockey. This car comes with a six-speed manual transmission, and that's the choice to get. Now this is a Regal, so you've got the Regal styling, which I think is pretty good. But the front clip is different, kind of the Buick body kit. It visually lowers the car. That nice scoop on the side panel is really a distinctive feature on this car. And the actual character line up over the wheels into the trunk, it actually kind of is a familial resemblance to the Chevy Cruze, but it still looks very mean. And thank God they didn't put the triple porthole on the front fender. I mean, that has just got to stop. This car is, yes, kind of a hot rod flavor of the Regal, but it's still the Regal interior. The materials are fine. There's soft touch plastics on the dash. There's some soft touch plastics on the door. But in a lot of cases, it is still hard GM plastic. The good news is that those plastics and things are really only on the things you're not going to touch unless you think, what does that feel like? This entire center stack, everything about it feels like shields laid on top of each other. Not that rounded off GMI's buttons. They're actually sharp and crisp, and they have character. Everything in here is really well thought out. And they're finally putting seats in that are effective. Probably the best seats I've ever sat in in a GM vehicle. This GS is definitely trying to let you know it's an enthusiast car. Everything is saying, look at me, I'm a sports car. And it, it kind of is. The whole front end of this car is pretty busy when you're hammering it through the corner. Not very many car manufacturers have been able to figure it out. But I have yet to feel any torque steer through this car. It initially feels a little overboosted, but I'm getting some good feedback through the corners here. That's a crazy thing called the hyper strut that exists so that this little front wheel drive car feels less like front wheel drive. Now, to be honest with you, I have heard a 20 minute dissertation on why the hyper strut is cool. Let me clarify, it is very cool. The description will put you into a coma. You get in this car and don't expect it to be this fast or this agile, and it's both. Now this car has three settings. It has normal, it has sport, which makes everything about 20% eh, or so more aggressive. And then it has GS. So let's be honest, I just kind of want to break it in the GS button position and just leave it there. Take a screwdriver and pry that button off so you can never change it. GM has done nearly everything they can to make this a driving machine, but it's still a front wheel drive turbocharged car. Do I think the GS is gonna peel away BMW and Audi buyers? Well, let's be honest, that's asking a lot. If it was all wheel drive, I think we'd have a little bit better shot. I love the direction that this car is setting. And it makes me really eager for future Buicks. I've never said that before in my life. It might not be the car for you. You may prefer the tactility of one of the rear wheel drive guys. But if you've pondered this car at all, it is worth a test drive and a hard test drive because it's got plenty of sport. It has a surprisingly flat chassis. Just remember, it's GS button or not at all.